Let's continue the conversation now with two gentlemen who monitor the political pulse of our nation. First, Skyping in from Syracuse, New York, pollster John Zogby of Zogby Analytics. John's also the director for the Keenan Center for Entrepreneurship at Lemoyne College. And Skyping in from Atlanta, pollster and as of today, retired syndicated columnist Matt Towery. Thanks to you both for your time tonight here on Newsmax Prime. Uh, Matt, you hang up the column, but stuff comes out today you might want to write about again. Donald Trump with an unscheduled meeting at the RNC with Reince Priebus. Now, this surprised a lot of people. In fact, Trump put out this tweet that uh, we ought to take a look at. He says, just had a very nice meeting with Reince Priebus and the GOP, looking forward to bringing the party together, and it will happen. Hard to fault him for trying to uh, at least set up a note of reconciliation and unity there. Well, it's, you know, it's interesting. I, <laughs> and John certainly has noted this as well. We've both been writing about this. You know, Donald Trump is the great divider and, and in another sense, the great uh, conqueror. I don't know which one he's going to be, uh, but I can promise you this, as I allude to in my final column, dancing with the GOP establishment is a, is, is a no-win proposition. And if Donald Trump doesn't realize this now, he'll find out by July. And uh, you mentioned that in that final column, that the way the establishment is trying to direct things, almost a hidden hand, or maybe not such a hidden hand. Uh, John Zogby, this campaign has been full of so many surprises. This from Trump today, uh, just confess, does, does it surprise you? It's a little surprising, is it not? Uh, no, not really. Okay. I mean, he, had to, he had to do something at, at some point, especially, you know, he's had a, a very bad ride this week. So he had to kind of neutralize some very bad news. He stepped in it a couple of times, comments about women and, and abortions, where he was able to u unite pro-life and, and, uh, and pro-choice people at the same time. But look, let's be honest here. Uh, and I've got to be the one to say the emperor has no clothes. I watched Donald Trump with Anderson Cooper the other night, and I had a sense I was watching a grown man deteriorate. JD, and I'm being very honest about that. Um, he sounded like he was coming apart. He sounded like he needs a break, uh, and he sounded like uh, uh, actually a, a man who just cannot accept any controversy, which he generates all the time, or any criticism whatsoever. I and and he's being rewarded now for all that. It, it appears in Wisconsin, where he's down by double digits, where he had been leading just about ten days ago. Well, it is obvious, and we hear from a lot of his supporters, he has to study the issues. He has to get more into a campaign mode. But, man, I'm curious because you mentioned the establishment, and the RNC has, uh, it looks like it's trying to prepare Republicans for a contested convention. Earlier today, the RNC unveils a, quote, convention facts webpage. And on it, they include who the delegates are, what the rules are, big explanation of how this all works. Uh, what do you think? Is this like a preemptive informational strike uh, to prepare oh. for a tough convention? Oh, I think so. And, and John nailed it. This has been a terrible week for Trump, uh, a, a complete meltdown. Some things that are really not issues, the Corey Lowndowski, however you say the guy's name, that I was a I, I, I learned, uh, you know, studied law and received my law degree in Florida. So I can tell you that it, that's a battery in essence, but it's not really and no one would prosecute it. But the other issues, as as John alluded to, such as the comments on abortion, that really is a meltdown right now. And so you are seeing those numbers in Wisconsin expand for Cruz. And that means we're far more likely to go to a broker convention. And my, let me point one thing out. The second round doesn't just become a free for all. There are a certain percentage of delegates that become up for grabs, but it's not the entire convention. So we could go three, four rounds of this stuff. No wonder Trump's there trying to make good and peace with these folks because he's in it up to his elbows right now. Uh, gentlemen, a couple of minutes, so actually uh, a minute remains in this particular segment, though you're coming back after the break. We would be remiss if we did not take a look at what Larry Sabato has, uh, has done with his crystal ball, or more accurately, with the electoral map. Uh, this is what he's saying from UVA Center for Politics. Obviously, it's a long way to November, but you take a look at the way he's got that map put together right now. 
plenty of electoral votes, and this is supposed to be a matchup between uh, Hillary and uh, Donald Trump. Right now, it looks like an overwhelming advantage for Democrats. Would you concur at this point, John Zogby? Yes, I would with a caveat. You know, Democrats have history on their side. I mean, they start out with, with, with six elections in a row at, at about 242, 246 electoral votes. They have demographics on their side, especially if they can energize those demographics or energize at least those demographics to vote against the other guy. By the same token, let, there, there are no givens here. Hillary is a damaged candidate, and I've said that over and over again. You never quite know when the shoe is going to drop. I think she's about to be embarrassed herself in Wisconsin. And look, I'm not ready to hand over New York to her just Fair yet. enough. We're going to have to hand this over to the break. We're going to come back and talk to Matt about the same subject and plenty more. You stay with us as Newsmax Prime continues. Continuing now on Newsmax Prime, there is the map that Larry Sabato at the University of Virginia Center for Politics has put out showing a decisive advantage for Hillary Clinton if the election were held today. Electoral votes would decide it. Larry says the Democrats have 347, the Republicans 191. But again, there are plenty of caveats to take into account. So let's continue our conversation. Via Skype from Atlanta, pollster Matt Towery. Matt retires today as a syndicated columnist. He's also the author of the book, News Vesting. And Skyping in from Syracuse, New York, pollster John Zogby of Zogby Analytics. John also serves as the director for the Keenan Center for Entrepreneurship at Lemoyne College. He's the co-author of the book, First Globals, Understanding, Managing, and Unleashing Our Millennial Generation. So, Matt, John got a crack at Sabato's crystal ball and that electoral map. Republicans are used to starting in a hole. That's why you have campaigns. Yeah, that's true. I, and if there are two guys I respect, it's Larry Sabato and, and, and John. So I, I, I will say, as, as we sit here right now, I can see where Larry has come to this conclusion. But when I see states like Georgia and other states being called purple, I've been down that road many times, and it just doesn't ever quite come to fruition. And in our last segment, uh, John sort of alluded to the fact that while he sort of agrees right now that, that this is the way things look, that a few changes and a precarious situation for Hillary Clinton, and suddenly you could see states that normally are, are considered blue that, that would become purple or even red potentially. So this is a wacky year that really, I mean, they say this every four years, but I think John would agree, this is a really wacky year in politics. So I wouldn't say anything right now is going to be a reflection where we'll be in November because they haven't started taking the battle against each other. We don't even know who the battlers will be. And to that point, because Hillary's got trouble with the FBI, uh, Ted Cruz apparently now hot on the heels of Donald Trump in Wisconsin. In fact, leading in Wisconsin last night, Cruz shows up on Jimmy Kimmel's show. Uh, Ted talked about why he is disliked in the Senate. And uh, well, let's just let's listen to what he had to say last night with Jimmy Kimmel. When you stand up to Washington, they don't like it. Uh, but I will say, as you noted, Donald Trump has an amazing ability to clarify everything. And we're seeing now Republicans coming together, unifying behind our campaign. You know, just a week ago, Lindsey Graham hosted an event for me and, and I joked at the beginning, I said, listen, this, this, is, this is a first, this is the first event I've ever had hosted by someone who three weeks earlier publicly called for my murder. Uh, so he got a few yucks out of that, although it is kind of macabre, isn't it? What he really likes, though, is the new poll out of Marquette that has Ted Cruz ahead by 10 points, 40% to 30% for Trump. Uh, Cruz, moving from cruise control to warp speed. John, what do you think is going to happen in Wisconsin? Oh, I think that, that Cruz is going to win, and I wonder if John Kasich is going to come in second. Because, you know, what's really, you know, what's really happening here is a united Republican establishment and a unity among radio talk show hosts at the same time. In fact, all of this against Donald Trump. I mean, it's breathtaking. It's, um, you know, for those who've opposed Trump 
from day one, uh, this is stunning that this is finally, uh, finally seems to be happening. Now, if he turns around and wins it, then, you know, that Matt said at the very beginning of, of our interview about the Republican establishment, you know, is, is correct plus some. Well, it, it, when, you, when you take a look at this, John, you use the term meltdown. Now, we should point out for the record, you expected this in September of 2015. Uh, Matt, I don't know if it's a meltdown, but you take a look at the latest national polls from Quinnipiac. As you take a look at those national numbers, um, the general election matchup does not look good for the Donald against either Hillary or Bernie. And there's a new poll out from Washington Post and ABC News showing that Trump would be, quote, the most disliked nominee of modern times. So um, is this is this all I hate to use the term uh, from Reverend Wright. Are the chickens coming home to roost for the Donald? Well, not quite yet. Here's what's going on. He's I mean, Wisconsin is going to be a disaster for Trump. And I agree with John. I, I ventured to guess of whether Kasich might in, end up in second place. But after that, you've got New York where the numbers are very strong for Trump. What, what you're seeing here is a campaign in near meltdown. And we're going to find out whether Donald Trump melts down or he comes back enough to stay alive. And if he does and he gets that second leg of momentum, there's the possibility. I don't think he's going to get this thing without going to the convention. But there's a possibility he could end it in an upswing, go, even going into California. And we don't know what's going to happen to these other candidates in the meantime because uh, a lot has to do with how Kasich fares in New York and other states in Pennsylvania if he stays in there. So I don't think any of this is over. We're going to go to the convention. But I do agree that for the moment, at least, it looks like there's a meltdown going on for, for Trump. And, and I'll add one last thing. I do not believe it. I, I'd, I'd be curious what John thinks. I never like seeing these these head to head contests six or seven months out because no one's campaigned against each other. So it's hard to say what's going to happen. Ronald Reagan was way behind Jimmy Carter at this stage back in 1980 because I witnessed it firsthand. So anything can happen with Cruz, with Trump, with anyone. It's sort of hard to really project a general well, election. You, you asked a question of John. Let's get his thought. Final 30 seconds to you, John Zogby, on this whole electability question across party lines. A hell of a statement coming from a couple of guys who've made their living doing the head-to-head -head six months and 12 months out. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, I mean, Matt is absolutely right. This is where we stand right now. It is not in any way, shape, or form a projection of what will happen because this is the year that anything has happened already. And we know what will happen right now. We will have to thank you. John Zogby in Syracuse, New York, and Matt Towery from Atlanta, Georgia, where he's hanging up his word processor as a syndicated columnist. Now, maybe you feel motivated to give us your comments. Do so by going to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments or to Twitter. We're coming back.